what's going on? Ladies and gentlemen, it's First Lady Harmonic. Haven't been here in a while. We've just been doing a lot of things um, <clears throat> in reference to trading and just really honing in on my skills. So for the last couple of days, I've just been looking at the charts and just really analyzing them. And of course, my favorite pair, GBP, NZD, very volatile. A lot of pips that can be, can be caught here. So you may be wondering why um, I have uh, this support and resistance on my chart as well as some numbering. It's because most of you know that I also have incorporated another style of trading, which gives me more pippage and, and more directional um, confluence as to where price is going. It's along the same principles as a harmonic and Elliott wave, um, knowing that the market moves in a harmonious raw market fashion. It moves only in five waves, one, two, three, four, five. Um, and so once you begin to understand those principles, um, you'll take your trade into yet another level. And so that's what I've just been trying to do, just been trying to hone in on leveling up in my trading, trying to make this money so that way I can live the way I want to live. But anyway, just looking at this chart, looking at the four hour chart, um, I do trade on the one hour, but the four hour and the daily is what I tend to look to for my directional bias. And what I'll do is I'll go into the one hour to probably take my trades. I don't really get down to the 15 minute, but sometimes I do depending on how aggressive I want to be and, and where I am in the market and so forth. But um, for, for the most part, daily, the four hour, and then I enter on the one hour. So let me see something here. All right, so what I'm looking at here is we have a, uh, a nice move downward in this area. Where I, as you can see, I have my quarter points on as well as my 50% marks of my quarter points. So my support and resistance is always drawn up for me. I don't have to worry about knowing where that is. We see price has currently rejected at this uh, minor quarter point at the 1925 area and has come down, um, probably heading towards this 1.9 and maybe you'll probably get some type of formation before heading back up. But um, just for now, what I see here as far as the harmonic is concerned, we have a strong push down a retracement back up, a nice retracement back up, which can be measured out. And then we have another push down. And what I noticed was this low here was broken, which makes this an extension pattern. And there's only a few extension patterns, but to find out what extension pattern this could be, we need to measure out what this area, where did this area land. And the way we do that is with, of course, um, the Fibonacci. So I'm going to take my Fibonacci tool. I'm gonna measure from this high, you wanna be very careful and be very accurate, to this low here. Okay, so now what I'm looking at is, is this a 618 or a 786? Well, it can't be a 786 because a 786 would represent the butterfly plat pattern and it's not an extension pattern. And because we have this break here, um, we're gonna use the 61.8. And then we have a, 113 right here, a 113 uh, Fibonacci touch here. So this looks to be a shark pattern. Now our D point, which is always like, I love my, my harmonics. I have both my extensions measured from top to the bottom. So really in one swoop, I get my X, A, my B point, as well as my um, D point. And when you have an extension, I get my X, my A, my B, my C, and my D point all in one swoop. <laughs> but anyway, enough of that. So being that this is a, sh uh, a possible shock pattern, I'm going to say possible because I can't guarantee anything. Uh, we know our D point ends at a 886 or a 113, right? So the question is, where are we most likely to go? Well. I'm thinking more so we're going to end up at the uh, 113 because usually I see from the 113 uh, C point usually is a 113 uh, D point. But the reason why I'm also saying that is because of this major, well, minor quarter point, the 1925. Um, we may get some rejection in this area, slight pullback here, and then rise up, but the major pullback may happen at the 113. So, with that being said, 
um, my harmonic pattern would look like this. So it'd be X, A, and then mark that in C, B, C. I'm gonna go for A right here. And what you want to be careful of, since we have two different um, ways or two different 86 and a 113 uh, possible D points, what you want to look for is once we get to this 886 area, if you see a strong bullish candle or impulsive candle, very strong, um, it could be an indication that the trend is still strong. And you'll know for sure if that next candle, what you want to get it at 886 or any D point completion of a harmonic, what you want to get is some type of rejection from the next candle. But if that next candle happens to continue upwards, that is your sign that the 886 is no longer your D point, but the 113 is going to be your new target. And once you get there, you can place your sell limit at the 113 for an aggressive entry. We're probably going to get a little overshoot. You may get something like this and then come down. I'm thinking we're going to come down probably to some area of structure, either along here or along here. But um, that's what I'm looking for. Um, once we come down, I do believe that we are not coming too far down, I believe. Uh, based off of my other uh, strategic advanced uh, method that I trade, um, we are going to continue um, going up. So that is my prediction for the GBP NZD pair um, for next week. It's a four hour. I'm looking for maybe something for price to even come down right around here and then continue up upwards. So let's just look up for that next week. Until then, I'll talk to you later.